In this video on C Sharp Basics, we'll be discussing jumping statements. Now, jumping statements allow us a way to move to different sections of our code. Now, there are no conditions that need to be met within the jumping statements that cause the jump to happen. The jumping statements give us a way to exit or skip sections of code whenever it's needed. And finally, you'll mostly find jumping statements are used within looping statements like while, do while, for, and for each. Here is a list of some of the keywords which are jumping statements. There's break, which exits the current scope. We've actually seen the break keyword used before when we were working with the switch statement. Then there's the continue jumping statement. Now the continue goes back to the start of the looping statement and reevaluates the expression of the loop. The go to keyword skips to a labeled section of code. So you can actually have a specific section of code that's marked and labeled, and the go to keyword will skip to that specific section of code. The return keyword exits a method or property scope. We haven't dealt with methods or properties very much yet, and we will extensively once we start working with class objects. Just understand that the return keyword exits the current method or property scope, such as the main method that we've been working in. And finally, there's the throw keyword. And the throw keyword halts the execution of code and returns an error. Now throws can be handled within code to continue execution of the application, but in general, they're used to display some sort of problem within the application to the user. So I just brought over the code from our for each loop. Uh, so we still have the array of names here. And first, I want to show you the functionality of the break statement. But in order to do that, I'm going to need to write an if statement here inside of the for each loop. And what I want to do is when the looping goes through and gets to Joy's name, I want it to go ahead and exit out of the for each loop by using the break statement. So we'll do if name equals Joy then inside the scope of the if statement, we're going to say break. Now, this should mean that by the time that we get to the name joy, it's going to actually break out of the for each loop and move on to the console.read line. Now, since it's going to break before it writes to the console window, we should only get Sam and Tony. I'm going to go ahead and set a breakpoint here on the for each loop so we can kind of track the code and see what happens when we run the application. Okay, so our first pause here is on the for each loop. I'm going to go ahead and hit F11. We'll see that we get the array of names. Then we're getting the first name within that array, which is Sam. And we're checking to see if the name is Joy, but since it's Sam, it's not. And it's going to skip over the if statement and move on to the console.write line. Next, we check the name of Tony to see if it matches Joy, which it does not. So we move on and we write to the console window. Then finally, the name is going to be Joy. It checks to see if the name is Joy, which is true. We hit the break statement, which actually exits out of the for each scope and moves on to the console.read line. Now, if we take a look at our console window, sure enough, there's Sam and Tony. Next, let's see what happens if we change break to the keyword of continue. Now, if you recall from the last video, the continue statement goes back to the start of the looping statement and reevaluates this expression. So I'm going to once again set a breakpoint here on the for each loop, and let's go ahead and run the application. Okay, so here we are paused at the for each loop. I'm going to go ahead and hit F11, grab our array of names, and the first value within that names array is Sam. So we're going to check to see if Sam equals Joy, which it does not, so we skip over that and we write the name Sam to the console window. Then we go back to the for each loop statement, get the next name, which is Sam, or excuse me, which is now Tony. And of course, Tony is not equal to Joy, so we write that to the console window and we move on to the next name. Now the next name is Joy. And now it checks to see if the name is Joy. If it is, then we hit the continue statement. And now watch where we jump to after the continue statement. I'm going to hit F11 one time here, and we can see that we go back to the for each loop. Now we ended up skipping Joy, and now the name is going to be Joe. 
And so we're writing Joe to the console window. Then we're writing Sandra to the console window. And finally, we hit our read line. And you can see Sam, Tony, Joe, and Sandra, and Joy was skipped because we skipped her by using the continue statement. So now let's take a look at the go to statement. Now the go to statement skips to a labeled section of code. So the first thing we need to do is actually set out a labeled section of code. I'm going to go ahead and put a label here uh, just above the console.read line, and I'm going to say the end. Okay, now a label for your code has to end with a colon. So you'll see the end colon. And now I've named this specific section of code. You can think of this as a reference point that I can jump to at any time. So now if I change the continue statement to go to, now I can specify which statement I want to go to. That would be the end. So now if the name is joy, then it will go to the end. And the end is this block of code here, which is where we console.readline. I'm gonna go ahead and set a breakpoint here on the for each loop statement, and let's run the application. So of course we start off with the for each statement. We're gonna get the array of names, check the first name, which is Sam, and check to see if Sam is Joy, which it is not, so we move to console.writeline. Then we check the next name, which is Tony, it is not joy, so we write that to the console window. And then finally, the name gets changed to joy. Now, when the name gets changed to joy and it's discovered that joy equals joy, then we're gonna execute this go to statement. And it says go to the end. And you'll see that when I move to the next line, it skips right to the the end label. Now, if I hit F11 again, we see that the console.readline command gets executed. And now we are presented with our console window where it's prompting us to enter some sort of key. And you can also see that Sam and Tony are the only names that appear. Now let's take a look at the return statement. So I'm gonna get rid of the, the end label here and change my go to the end statement to just simply return. Now when I use return, that's actually going to exit out of our static void main method. That means that the console.readline command will not get executed if we happen upon a name of joy. I'm just gonna go ahead and set a breakpoint here on the for each loop and we'll watch to see what happens. So here we are at the for each loop and we're gonna get the array of names. The first name inside that array of course is Sam. Sam is not equal to joy so we write that to the console window. Then the next name that we come across is Tony. Tony again is not joy and so we write that to the console window. Now we're getting the name Joy. And as we move through this, if I hit next and then the return statement, I just wanna show you the command window here, the console window. You can see Sam and Tony are listed once again, but when I hit F11 here on the return, we're gonna jump completely outside of the main method here. You can see that the cursor has jumped all the way down to the, uh, to the last bracket for this main method and it just simply exits out of the application because we never hit the console.readline request to wait for someone to press a key in the console window. Now finally, let's take a look at the throw statement. Now the throw is a very special statement because it halts all execution of your application and presents an error to your user. Now there are things that can catch these errors and we will go over that at a later time in this series. But for right now, just understand that a throw statement is actually going to halt all of the execution of your code. Now when you're throwing an error, you actually have to associate it with some sort of exception error. You have to actually state what is the error that's occurring. Now there are some pretty generic errors that you can toss out and we're gonna use one of those now. We're just gonna go ahead and say throw new application exception. And by doing this, this is actually going to throw an error to the user and halt all of the execution of your application. Let's go ahead and see this in action here. I'm just gonna go ahead and run the application without setting any sort of breakpoint. And now we get the application exception is unhandled error message. Now, if this was not a debugging session and we were actually uh, distributing this application to our users, 
if they got this particular error message, they would get a big old uh, red box that says, you know, there was an error running the application and it would completely shut down the application when they clicked on the OK button. But for us, we actually get to this debug point. We get an opportunity here to take a look inside the code and see what's going on. And if I open up the console window, you can see that sure enough, the first two names inside of our array do get displayed to the console window, but now we're clearly at some sort of application exception error.